Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Van Build Tiny House. What does it cost to build a van? And in this series we talk about what it costs for us to build our van. We also talk about what it would cost for you to build a van and we look at a sweeter version and then a simpler version. And then finally we talk about what it would cost if you were to have somebody else build the van. Now this series is broken down into several episodes. In the first one we talked about the van itself. In the second one we talked about the build. So everything kind of inside of the build. In this episode we're going to talk about the plumbing. We have the electrics to go as well as the attic and sort of all the other miscellaneous stuff in the summary. That will be in episode 5. But this is episode 3 of 5, the plumbing. So let's jump right in. first thing we're going to talk about is the freshwater system and so in our van our freshwater system comes in through our sink in our kitchen that's where we wash our dishes wash our faces brush our teeth and do all that type of stuff I should mention that we have an additional line out back that we can hook a garden hose to for any watering or showering that we need to do outside now we have a huge filtration system actually it's a whole house filtration system and it's mounted underneath the underside of our van and so that cost the filtration system that we have cost us about three hundred dollars now for a simpler version i'm thinking that you could put an under counter filtration system you could still have a three sediment filter and a uv light similar to what we have just smaller i think you could do that for about half of what we did ours so i think you could do a simpler version of the filtration for about 150 dollars and for a sweeter version, well, I think we have a pretty sweet version, so I left it the same at $300. Now the next thing I want to talk to in terms of fresh water is the tanks. And the tanks is where you're going to spend quite a bit of money. Tanks are expensive, so we spent $500 on our 27-gallon fresh water tank and our 15-gallon uh, gray water tank. Now a simpler version of that might be to use jerry cans underneath your sink. Now, unfortunately, that takes up some precious space inside of the van. We did not want to do that, but if you're looking for a simpler version, I think you can do that for about $100. And so, nice, easy jerry cans underneath there, and that also eliminates the need for some of the plumbing, the pipe, the fittings, and all that other type of stuff. And so, it really makes it simpler. Now, you will have capacity issues. Uh, and when I say issues, I mean you'll probably have to fill your water every two or three days. We have 27 gallons. That lasts us three to five days. You decide what works for you. For the sweeter version, I think you could go upgrade the tanks and go with maybe something like stainless steel. And also have level gauges so you know when your tank's half full or when your tank's full or empty so you know when to refill. That would be a sweet addition. I think you could get all that done for an extra thousand bucks. So those are some of the major costs on the fresh water system we all have also have the pipes and the fittings and all that type of stuff as i said i spent about 250 dollars on that i think you could probably in the simpler version get away with only about 40 on that spend i kept it the same for the sweeter version the pump is another big cost our pump and this includes sort of like the pre-pump filter and the uh the accumulator and all that other type of stuff that goes with the pump we spent about 200 dollars on that type of stuff I think you could probably in a smaller system do that for about 150 maybe a bit less and so that's what I would do for the sweeter version now for the faucet we spend about 150 bucks you could probably get an easier or simpler lower cost version for about $75 and then for the sweeter version you know you could spend $200 I'm sure you could spend a lot more than that on that the one last cost I have in the freshwater category is I had to mount all my tanks and all my pipes and insulate them and do all that stuff because it is under chassis and so all that stuff underneath there cost me about a hundred dollars in materials if you put your water under the sink you wouldn't need all that so that cost would completely go away I'm leaving it the same for the sweeter version because I'm assuming if you want it macked out you want to maximize your internal space and put your water under the chassis so that's the numbers so for the fresh water system we spent about fifteen hundred dollars on ours and I think for the simpler version, much simpler version, you could do that for roughly around $500. And for the sweeter version, 
you know, I think you could spend $2,500 without batting an eye. And so that's where we come in on the freshwater system. So now let's move on to the shower. Now, we have a recirculating shower. And so with that comes a huge filtration system, similar to the one that we have for our freshwater system. Uh, this includes a spin down filter, which is nice and necessary since we're recirculating the water. It allows me to purge and sort of flush all the water out of there. That adds an additional $85 to the filtration. So that's $385. If you wanted a simpler version of that, I think you could not do a recirculating shower, just do a straight shower and that would save you a bunch of money. Obviously you wouldn't have any of the filters to do that. You may be able to uh, save on tanks and pumps and all that other type of stuff because you could use the same stuff that you use for your freshwater system. So as we go through these prices, keep that in mind. But I spend 50 bucks on our freshwater tank for the shower, that's a 10 gallon tank. And the pipes and the fittings, we spent about 300 bucks. We spent $200 on the pump and all that other type of stuff. The shower fixtures, which would be like, uh, you know, the diverter valve, the mixer valve that you turn the shower on, and then the shower head itself. We spent about $200 on that, or I'm sorry, $150. But I will say, guys, we did get that on a significant uh, discount at, I think it was like Home Depot or something like that. So we got a pretty good price on that. And then we spent $100 on the mounting. So the shower, the recirculating shower for us, now this does not include the wet room. So this does not include that, but the plumbing piece of this for the recirculating shower, we spent about $1,185. So roughly $1,200. I think you could do not a recirculating shower, but a regular shower for about 360 bucks as long as you leverage the fresh water system. And then for the sweeter version, I did put in a little money for sweeting up uh, the tanks. And so that money's in there, an extra 400 bucks, and we kind of talked about it in the fresh water system. So if you did that, that would bring your total to around 1500 bucks for the recirculating shower. So just to recap that, I spent $1,185. I think you could do it for under $400. And for the sweeter version, I think you're probably looking at around $1,500. That's my estimation and I'm sticking to it. Now, the wet room, the wet room is where the shower is. And since we have a shower inside the van, we need to, we need to keep all that water in the van so we don't have rust issues and we don't have water everywhere. So that is the wet room. In our case, the wet room, which would include the shower bench. And if you'll notice under the shower bench, we also have this marine hatch, which gives us additional storage and still keeps that area dry, even though it's inside the wet room. And then on the other side, we have the composting toilet. And you'll also notice how that's kind of dried in, if you will. And so all that stuff, including the floor drain so in, and basically the wet room or the shell of the wet room costs us about $1,600. Now, I think that you could cut some corners on that and probably do it for about $1,000 yourself. And then for the, the upgraded version, I think you could spend you know, $2,000 on that. And for $2,000 uh, in the wet room, I'm talking about using aluminum, lightweight aluminum, and then a stainless steel shower pan. And uh, that would certainly be a nice feature to have. I think you can keep it lightweight and uh, it, it would be a really nice feature. And so that's kind of what I put in for the sweeter version. So just to recap the wet room, I was at $1,600. I think you could do it for a thousand dollars and the sweeter version would be two thousand dollars and if you're kind of wanting to see more details on what's involved in that recirculating shower as well as the wet room you can check out and i'll link it right here but you can check that video out on a recirculating shower and it'll answer a lot of questions about what's included in that and then the next thing moving right along we're going to go to the composting toilet and so as you've already noticed in this video, our composting toilet is built in. And so we use a sea head toilet and toilets are kind of expensive. And so ours was $850. Um, I think you could probably do a DIY composting toilet where you sort of make it your own and you can still build it in. I think you could do that for about 200 bucks. And for those of you who were out there saying, I would never do a composting toilet. I really don't understand you because composting toilets are the best <laughs> in my opinion but if you do want a traditional toilet or something like that you can certainly get the little porta potties the portable ones and i think you can get those for about 200 dollars. they have the little tank inside the black water tank and the water 
reservoir and all that inside that one piece and you they can get pretty fancy you can spend more money on them than that so for a full flushable toilet system i put two thousand i put twelve hundred dollars in that also if you're wanting to to get the nature's head uh, composting toilet which seems to be what most everybody's using we didn't use that because we wanted ours built in and you sort of have to take that thing apart to get access to it you got to crank to mix it up we didn't want to go through all that we didn't use that but again I think if you went something like that you'd spend a bit more than we did so twelve hundred dollars for the composting toilet or for the toilet I should say is a pretty good number so again just to recap those numbers the toilet 850 for us i think you could do it for 200 and then if you want to go with a fancy version you could probably spend 2000 on that uh, without batting an eye and the last category we have is really is heating the water and so we use a hydronic heating system so basically that's an on-demand hot water heater and that heats our fresh water as well as our recirculating shower water separately so there's no intermingling of the two waters and yet they're both heated whenever we turn the water on so it's a really nice nice system we love it all included everything in for that system we spent about twenty eight hundred dollars on that um, I think if you first of all you don't even have to if you don't want hot water that cost totally goes away so for those of you who are saltier than us and can deal with cold water there you go but I think you could get like a little three to five gallon electric hot water heater that you tuck away somewhere in the van probably get one of those for a couple hundred bucks I plugged a couple hundred bucks for a simpler version again it's probably not going to get you uh, on demand hot water all the time but it would probably suffice 200 bucks and for a sweeter version uh, there's a company out there that makes a a version a kit of similar to what we have it's got a bit more control a bit more temperature control I think it even has an electric backup ours uses diesel fuel or whatever I think theirs is more of a hybrid it's a good system but it's about fifty five hundred dollars so again it's pricey and I think there's a couple other systems out there like that so just to recap heating of the water and also with our hydronic heating system we also heat our air as well so it's two in one but I have all the costs right here and so the hydronic heating system for us was twenty eight hundred dollars to build uh, I think you can do it for two hundred dollars a heating system not a hydronic heating system but a heating system for two hundred dollars and for the sweeter version you could spend as much as fifty five hundred dollars so what is the grand total for you <laughs> to build this van the simpler version and the sweeter version I've got us at eight thousand dollars for the plumbing so again that's fifteen hundred dollars for the fresh that's about twelve hundred dollars for the recirculating shower sixteen hundred dollars for the wet room eight fifty for the composting toilet if that math does not add up don't worry about it I did some rounding so the rough number is eight thousand for us in total for you home gamers the simpler version I came up with about twenty five hundred dollars and for the sweeter version I came up with about thirteen thousand dollars for the plumbing build now I also told you guys that I would discuss with you what I think it would cost to have somebody else to build and for this it's a really easy discussion I think you use a simple two-time multiplier so if we take our version of it we came in at eight thousand dollars I think if you double it I think you can have this built for sixteen thousand dollars so I think um, the labor and the material on that would be about the same for the simpler version and the sweeter version you can apply the same logic I believe so to have the plumbing built for our version sixteen thousand for a simpler version 5000 for the sweeter version I mentioned 26000 and I think that's what you can have the plumbing done for so I hope this information helped you guys <laughs> it certainly would have been beneficial for me to know when I kind of tried to decide what I was going to put in the van and then how I was going to do it and then where I was going to find all the stuff so I hope this is beneficial for you but keep in mind the plumbing and the electrics are really what makes this van to us 
that makes this ho tiny house a home. And so it gives us the creature comforts and the stuff to use. And so the electrics, which is what is up next, we're gonna discuss all that stuff, how we charge stuff, how we power all this, how we charge our batteries, what kind of batteries we have. It's gonna be really action packed. And electric's where you can spend a lot of money. So I think this is gonna be a really valuable episode for you. And then we also have where we're gonna do the attic, we're gonna do the air conditioner, and sort of a summary, we're gonna wrap everything up put all the miscellaneous pieces in it and then we're going to come up with the total number in the final episode so a couple more episodes to go so don't forget to turn your notification notifications on we certainly want to see you guys on the next one we appreciate you tuning in cheers we'll see you on the next one if you liked this video be sure to give us a thumbs up subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you know when we put out new videos to see behind the scenes action and help support our journey head over to our YouTube membership page. You can find the link in the video description. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in a few days.